Good morning, and welcome to How Would I Cast This? <laughs> it's my new series of videos about casting challenges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find pieces that have specific challenges, specific difficulties, and solve them uh, in the mold and in the castings. And if this is helpful to you and you like this idea, let me know. The first piece that I'm gonna start with is this little object. And I found this uh, on the beach, because I collect plastic off the beach and I make toys and sculptures and other weird things out of my beach trash collection. I uh, have no idea what this part came from. Maybe, maybe if you know, you can let me know in the comments. Um, but I really love the shape and uh, it poses a very specific problem. And that is, I want this piece to be hollow, a hollow cast piece, but I want these little knobs on the sides to be solid and to feel solid and to be attached. I don't want to take the thing apart and have to do these separately. So how do you make a hollow casting that also includes solid parts? Along the way, I'm going to show you some techniques in, in making a mold that you haven't seen before. And it um, should be a lot of fun. Let's get started. This piece was kind of a mess. Uh, it had been floating around in the ocean for a while, but more than that, I think it had been chewed by a dog. It was really dinged up on one side. And so I began this piece by just puttying up the dings with some magic sculpt, some epoxy type putty. And as you can see, you see that? Look at that, look how shiny that is. What I did was I sanded it down, but then I polished it. I just put it on a buffing wheel. Most plastics will polish out really well. Resins polish out really well. Even this epoxy putty polishes out really well. And you generally put as much work as you can into your model, into your original, because the last thing you want to do is cast flaws that are in the model into the mold. And because that mold is going to transfer each and every one of those flaws perfectly every time to the casting. So fix it once in the model. If, you, if you're going to cast it 10 times and you got flaws, you're going to fix them 10 times. You cast it 100 times, you're going to fix them 100 times. You don't want that. Make sure you get the model as clean as you possibly can. Now, the other thing about this model that makes it somewhat tricky is that it's hollow. And you can see inside of there, there's openings to the uh, interior. And that's no good. We've got to fill those. You're just not going to be able to work with those. The easiest way to fill those openings is going to be to just use a little bit of oil clay. So I'm just going to pack a little oil clay down into that opening. And that should be all we need to do. Give me out a tool here. So the preparation is everything. I mean, the major thing that you have to do is prep your model. And things like openings, voids that you don't want the rubber to go into, obviously, have to be filled. The one thing I want to do, I really like this hex head opening. So I want to preserve that. I don't want to change that. I just want to close this off. And clay will do it. Got that nicely clayed up. On the other side, we're going to have to have a, a, a sprue. This is where the I'm going to pour the resin in. Now, the thing about this is I'm not going to need any vents on this particular part because this is going to be a rotational mold. And uh, so we won't be needing any vents, <laughs> but we will uh, need to uh, have a sprue. And also, this little plug that's going to form the sprue is also going to form this plug in the mold for when I cast it. So I think this piece, rather than cover it with clay, I think it's going to be much better to wax it in there. Break out the sticky wax, which we love with all our heart. And we're going to get this nicely coated. It's a piece of wood, so that's not great because it, the rubber could stick to it, but not if we coat it liberally with wax, which is what we're going to do. Grab that in there. Just push that on in. So this part, the, the sprue itself, I'm going to coat with blue, blue sprue wax. Just a nice, even coating of, of wax. I like this blue sprue wax, not just for forming sprues, but because it's so liquidy when it melts. It flows really nice onto surfaces and into cracks. It fills up cracks really very nicely. It makes nice fillets and joints. Just a generally handy dandy wax. And let's fill the gap between the part and the sprue with this same wax. This waxer is probably my most important tool for mold making. 
I, I use it all the time, well, sculpting too, and I'm doing wax, almost all the prototypes that I build are made of wax. So having a wax pen, or uh, this is a Fordham wax carver. All right, and that is looking good. So now I've got the sprue. I've got the a sprue beautifully installed. We're ready to put this in the mold, but a couple of things before we do. One is, I'm also gonna simultaneously mold and cast this part, which I did not prep on camera because it's essentially the same thing as this one. It's also gonna be hollow cast. It also has solid parts. And so while there be a slightly different method for casting it, they really are very similar parts. And so I thought you only needed, this, and, this, and this was more interesting in terms of how I'm gonna do the mold. This, this mold is just, you know, a basic container, it's stuck in a container. You've seen me do it before. So you'll see this part be cast, but I didn't think you needed to see me assemble it into a mold case. This scent, on the other hand, we're gonna do it in a different way than I would normally do it. I have a disc of rubber, a little disc of rubber, so I'm gonna drop in the bottom, if I can get it in there, yes. And then this is gonna lay on there, and it's gonna be glued to the side. And that's, so that little disc of rubber in there is nothing but a th place for this to rest so it doesn't fall all the way to the bottom of the container. So a little bit different, this piece isn't getting a base. In other words, it's just gonna be a round mold like this. It's 90 degrees in the studio today. It is steaming hot. I know, you people in Phoenix and Las Vegas are going, oh, that's not hot. <laughs> Listen, it's humid, it's hot. And even if I'm not too miserable, the rubber is going to be miserable. It's going to set up, want to set up really fast. So to prevent it from setting up too fast, I've got it chilling in the refrigerator right now. So I'm going to go get it, mix it, and we'll come back and then we'll pour these two molds. And hopefully we'll get them both poured before the rubber gels. I think that by using the trick of, of chilling the rubber for a little while in the refrigerator, we can lower its temperature so that it won't want to gel too quick. I mixed up some rubber and you can hear the vacuum pump in the background de-airing it. And we're almost ready to pour. Got everything set up. So let's go see how our rubber's doing. The first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna dump a little bit of rubber down into the bottom of this cup because I wanna glue this into place. And then we'll just drop it into place press it into place so we push out any air that's in there. We'll pour a little bit of rubber. Let me see if I can see that. I'm gonna pour from one side because I want the rubber to flow around that plug at the bottom. Not particularly in any huge hurry because I chilled this rubber, which was brilliant. By chilling the rubber, I, give my, I buy myself quite a bit more time. So what I'm doing is I'm building a bottom in the cup of rubber and I want my part to sit on that shelf of rubber that I'm building here. Okay, beautiful. Now, next thing, we wanna get this sticky waxed. And I mean really sticky waxed because the sticky wax is what's gonna carry this thing to glory. Here we go. Let's find that, put that in there. Oh, let's just see if that's gonna hold up. Okay, let's pour around it and see what happens. I'm gonna pour slow. It's difficult to pour the rubber between the walls of the cup and the part. I'm just gonna to have to flow it more or less from one side, but I also wanna make sure that it doesn't push the part away from where I want it to be. I'm gonna let that do its thing and I'm gonna evaluate how that's done. And while that's thinking about its sins, I'm gonna to start to fill this part Okay, this is filling up nice. How's this doing? Oh yeah, this looks like it's doing just fine. It's doing exactly what I wanted it to do, good. And we'll continue to let this fill from one side. Let that fill up. Same with this, we're gonna fill this from one side and let it wrap its way around the, the sprue on the bottom. Both of these are a little tricky to pour but by visualizing what you're doing, you can get it done. The bottom halves of the molds are the hard part. Once the bottom halves are 
filled, you're done. It's just then it's easy. Just making sure I'm popping out any bubbles that are rising. Some bubbles are rising up, very, very few. Even with the chilling, this rubber is beginning to gel. Like I said, it's 90 degrees in the studio. I got the windows open, I got fans going, but it's warm. And boy, I tell you what, temperature really matters to these, mater these materials. So I'm very, very pleased that I got the difficult part of the mold cast and done, because it's getting goopy. This one's also good. I think those bubbles are going to rise out just fine. I'm going to work on this, come back to you when I've got these things filled. Because this video is long enough. Let's get these molds out of their cases. You just slice them open, peel them apart like that. And same with the cardboard, slice it and you're done. This mold is different than any mold I've made prior to this because it's a radial cut. It's, I'm cutting from the center out. That's one of the important reasons why I made the mold round. If you make a mold round like this and you have a radial cut, it's just gonna close up all the, all the parting lines evenly and do a really nice job of doing that. So that's the design of this mold. Just another way to design a mold, still with the jaggedy cuts as always down to the model, but when I get to the model, I want to cut the parting lines straight. It's useful that I marked out where the feet are because I want to cut down to those feet. Okay, now I could probably peel this mold open all the way just on having done that, and I can. Look at that. Now the model is going to fall apart because it was an assembled model. <laughs> it's going to, we're going to break up the model, but that doesn't matter. And let's see if we can't pop him out of here. Oh yeah. Just pop him right out. All right. Pretty nice. That whole thing came out reasonably well. You can see the model in there. Oh, it looks like we caught one bubble right there. Tiny. Okay. We're going to see what kind of a casting we can make out of this. And like I said, when you put this together, this will close right up. All right, let's do this one. You can also use scissors to trim the molds. That works really well and that's good and quick. Now this is where the sprue comes out on the side. It's right there. I've seen people on YouTube use all kinds of devices and all, all kinds of tools and like surgical spreaders and stuff like that to cut open molds. You don't need any of that. You just need to know where you're cutting, and uh, admittedly, a little practice is a good idea. Having cut a lot of molds, I have found that it's better just to fill your way, and it works just as well. Sometimes it seems difficult to get them started, like this is kind of a tricky mold to, to get started, but it's not that hard to do. Just kind of hold it open, cut down, feeling your way down to the part. Again, the shorter the parting line, the happier I am. And that release that on that side. See that? See how that came out of there? Can you see that? Super nice. So that's going to work out really good. Other side's a little bit less deep because the cup is smaller. But now that the mold is open, I go right straight down to the parting line to where the thing is. Let's see, is this going to pop out? Oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> Very good. There he is. Popped out nice, and there you go. There's your pour hole in the side. And the mold should close up very neatly. Good, happy with that. Both of those molds cut well, and uh, I think they're gonna do their jobs. Let's go find out. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pour these little nubbins, these knobs on the side, and we're gonna pour them so that they're solid. So let's just mix up a small batch and see where that takes us. All right, there, I went a little past it. So how much past it did I go? Half a gram past it. So just for fun, I'll give it another half a gram. So it won't be a 20 batch, it'll be a 21 batch. Actually, you know, the smaller the batches that you mix when you mix resin, the more finicky they are. 
because you can percentage wise you can be off a lot more in other words, it's harder to mix a small batch accurately, even amounts, than a larger batch. Because if you're, you know, a gram or two off and you're weighing a few hundred grams, doesn't matter. But if you're a gram or two off and you're, you know, weighing five grams, you could be 25, 30% off. Whereas if you're doing a bigger batch, you're only a small percentage off. Okay, enough of that. Let's go and pour this. Gotta go quick because what we're doing is we're pouring the little solid little pieces that's sticking out of that piece. So let's mix up this resin. It is hot in this shop. This resin is gonna cure like lightning, so we don't have a lot of time. So let's pour in just enough to fill that little thing. And let's tip it in slowly. In the meantime, this other mold, I'm gonna pour this in there. And we're gonna do a little roto cast on there. And now this is done, so let's jiggle this and, and hope that that's going to flow in there. And now we'll put this little lid on there, and let's ro let's and we're just going to slush cast this piece. While we're waiting for that, let's slush cast. All I did here was I took a couple pieces of cardboard and just made a little... You know, it's easier to handle it with something rigid, which is like this, a top, a bottom, it's in a circle. I just cut a circle out, cut the circle out of that piece of cardboard, glued the bottom on, simple and easy. And it's gonna allow us to slush cast this piece. Just for fun, this way I can wait for this to do. Now when we, go to, when we rotate the hollow on this, we'll do it on the machine. But slush casting is really, this by hand, is very similar to rotating with the machine. I like, I'd rather rotate with the machine. I find it more fun to just flip the machine around than to do this dance. But it's a very effective way to do this. Works like a champion. And I'm looking at my witness cup as I always do, and it's still quite liquidy, even though it's hot in this shop. And we'll just keep doing this dance until it's time to take them both out. And I'll come back to you when we're ready to go on to the next step. Now I'm ready to pour the body of this kid. Pour it down the old porthole. Let's mix up a brat batch. We'll see what we get. Down the hatch it goes. Okay. And we have our happy little porthole, our little uh, plug hole device, which should stay in there all on its own steam. It really should not go anywhere. Let's see how badly it leaks. Just go ahead and let that thing spin, baby. Spin, spin, spin. We want continuous spinning action. Well, it's leaking a little bit more fantastically now that it's spinning, but really not too bad. Don't mind if it leaks a little bit. That leak is gonna tell us when we're really fully gelled. We're just rotating away in here, boys. Rotating away. Getting a nice coat job. It's a small amount of resin, so it should completely coat the walls. See, by hand rotating, I'm thinking about where I've been, what I'm coating, what the resin might be doing down inside. I'm looking at my drip as giving me clues as to what's going on in there. I'm looking at my cup, and it's still flowing. The resin is still flowing in the cup. And so, uh, yeah, we don't want to stop. We want to keep going, and we are going to keep going till we have it gelled and it's not moving anymore. We can stop and wait till it's fully cured to demold but we don't want to sag on the inside. By rotating it like this, we'll keep it, the wall thickness more even than it would otherwise be. All right, let's see if we can stop rotating now. Yeah, it's gelled. Okay, it has gelled. That's good. Now, we can let that sit, but while that's sitting, this is the piece that I did a minute ago by, by slush casting. I'm really curious to see how this came out. Let's find out. 
Let's open this boy up and see what we've got. Do we make a casting or what? Mostly wondering about those legs. Did they come out? Oh yeah, look at that. Not bad. Uh, caught one, exactly one bubble. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that bubble up in there? See that little bubble? It's an easy repair job, but I don't like to repair bubbles. Makes me mad. Um, caught some tiny, tiny minor bubbles in the, in the little corners and details in the sharp parts. That is very typical in rotational molding that you're gonna catch bubbles in the fine details. If you'll recall on the pug mug job, uh, link up here, I hand brushed first. And uh, you know, I might be inclined on subsequent castings of this part to do the same thing. A lot of times I know that the first shot's gonna you know, have problems and I don't worry about it that much. It's time to demold this guy. This is what our witness cup tells us, nice and hard. All right, let's pull this thing, see what we've got. Let's yank this thing and see what we have. Popping off the rubber bands. I find it's better to use a lot of lightweight rubber bands than to use one, a few, couple of big heavy ones. It just more evenly distributes the pressure on the mold, on the rubber, so you tend to warp it less. Okay, we'll get this out of there. All right, you know what? We can also, why don't we just, it's done its job for today. Why don't we just put that on the floor? Beautiful. See if the plug comes out. Is the plug gonna come out? Maybe not. I might have to work with that plug. That plug was well waxed, so the resin should come off it, yeah, but it may not come out. So this, I didn't show you this, but all I did was for this was just to build a little cardboard cradle. It just helped the rubber bands uh, keep its shape. I just was worried that this could deform it, its shape a little bit. Hey, wow, okay. I'm gonna see about this plug. Plug may be pretty well gripped on there. There we go. There it was, came out. All right, eh, not bad, not bad at all. So we succeeded. We got the, we got the solid little uh, ends, knobs. We got a pretty lightweight piece. And um, yeah, not bad at all. Beautiful. Two successful pieces. This piece, when I cast future copies, I'm gonna brush in the resin into the details. Anytime on a, on, a, on a rotational casting, if you have a lot of fine surface details, you just need to know you're probably gonna to have to mechanically force the resin into those areas because that's just prime. The, you know, the resin is sloshing around inside the mold and it's not necessary. It's, and that means it's like skipping over and it's not getting all the way out into that uh, into the super fine details. So I would definitely run a little acid brush with resin down in there, force the resin in there. But generally speaking, same with the little knobs here. At the ends of these knobs, they won't show, but still, those are the kinds of the extremities. It's the fine details on roto casting where you're likely to catch the most bubbles. A lot of times the first shot out of the mold is not perfect. It's kind of your evaluation shot. And uh, from there, you can make it better. I came up with a brilliant idea. Let's cut these open and see what they look like on the inside. Now look how much you can learn from cutting, cutting these pieces in half. Uh, I used way too much resin. So yeah, you just have to sacrifice a part, but you learn a lot from cutting open hollow castings. So next time I do it, I'm gonna use smaller batches uh, and probably a total of less than half of what I poured in here because I would like all of this to be hollow in here. It's just, you know, this is not a heavy piece, but it could be a lot lighter and use a lot less resin. So that's good to know. Let's cut the next one, see what we got in here. All right, this one was a lot more of a success, but it, you know, and the resin where it tended to clump, where it tended to rest was, was around this hole. So that's not terrible. This is the resin that we poured when we poured the solids in. 
So I expected it to be thicker here and here. So yeah, that's not a terrible result. Wall thickness is decent. Remember, this is a single shot. Now one way to do this would be to pour in three really light shots as opposed to one single shot. So we can refine this pour quite a bit. But this is why I take the time to cut them open. I can learn and see what's going on on the insides. Really helps out. Hey, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. And if you didn't, let me know about it. <laughs> Just tell me in the comments what I did wrong, what, it did, what you didn't like about it. Um, people are still sending in their projects and that's a lot of fun. We'll be working on some, some of those coming up soon. If you have questions or comments, absolutely hit me up down below. And I appreciate you watching very much and I'll see you next week.